great flood is coming. The storm cannot be stopped. It can be survived. About three, four years ago when the film wasn't happening, I decided to approach an artist and create the comic book. And I believe the graphic novel is coming out in Mexico around, um, around the 18th of this month. So uh, you can all, and it's very different. It's different than, it's this artist's interpretation of the script, so it's a bit different than the actual movie. What about uh, the Watchers? Yeah, yeah. How you were approach to that idea? Well, in the Bible, you know, it, it talks about uh, the Nephilim, which are these, it's, it's a strange part of the Bible. It talks about these giants that walk, walked on the earth back in Noah's time, so we knew we had to deal with it. So we decided to create these creatures that um, were these fallen angels, which is kind of what the tradition of the Watchers are. And uh, they're kind of encased and imprisoned on the earth. It's all based on a tra an oral tradition that's based around the Bible, uh, that's, that stretches back for thousands of years. Um, and people have always wondered how Noah built the ark, you know, such a huge structure all by himself and his family. Uh, and a lot of people have said, well, maybe these Nephilim, these Watchers, had helped them. We have to protect our family and save the innocent. And can you explain us uh, what is the Noah Art Show? Oh, Noah Art Show is this art show going on where I went out to um, 50 of my favorite artists and uh, had them create a piece of art based on the original Noah Genesis text. And it's all hanging there. You can actually see a bunch of the art at the website, noahmovie.com see a bunch of the art, but we actually have some really great uh, Mexican artists there. Armando Romero, who's pretty famous out here, and uh, Carlos Jorge, and uh, Armando's wife Carmen is in it, and uh, so it's, there's actually one area which is sort of the Mexican area, and it's, uh, it's, so it's, it's a really cool art show. Do you want to live? Protect your mother, protect them all. What about your collaboration with Frank Miller? Oh, um, well, I was a big fan of Frank Miller since high school, and so uh, when I was working on a few projects, I got involved with him and worked with him a bit. Are you still interested in Batman as a potential film, or just... Uh, no, no, that was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, you're working uh, with, uh, with Frank, no? With, in a novel, in a graphic novel? No, no. No, that's all many, many, many years ago. I haven't seen Frank in six, seven years. When you graduated, uh, you, you mentioned before that uh, the wrestler came with... Uh, you have a list of ideas, 10 yeah. ideas. Do you, do you still have that list? I do have that list. It's very secret. Uh, it's in a big vault, but uh, and there's a few ideas on it still that I haven't approached yet. What do you think you learned from Noah uh, as a director uh, with a visual style? I mean, with Black Swan you have handheld camera, also with the, 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 the wrestler. wrestler. Yeah, yeah. But this is more like uh, the fountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's somewhere in between. There's a lot of handheld camera in this too, and there's a lot of big shots as well. Ah. You know, I think, I think the most interesting thing about this film is the, the level of visual effects. You know, we had the most complicated uh, visual effect in ILM's history. It was something like a million processing hours. I read one statistic that if they had one computer making the, um, the shot, it would take 38 years for that computer to process the shot. So that's how big the shot was. And so we did some stuff in, in this film that you just you know can't do with a camera. And that was exciting and fun to do. This is the end of everything. Beginning of everything.